I used to uh, take a look at Instagram for three to four minutes after every sectional or mock that I attempted. Right. So I started my mock uh, when my syllabus was zero percent complete. What is your take on the self-studying versus coaching thing that many students contemplate? And yeah, so I took around four, uh, four or five months. Now I would have preferred to start it earlier. Because Hi everyone, this is Nishta and welcome back to the channel. Um, in today's video, we are going to learn the A to Z of CAT preparation, which I'm sure most of you will be targeting this year for your uh, MBA plans. And for that, I have my friend Sithanth. He is a recent graduate of Shahid Sukhdev College of Business Studies and he scored an astounding 99.99 percentile in CAT 2023. And he has already started his MBA at IM Bangalore as a fresher. So first of all, thank you, Sudhant, for taking out the time in your busy schedule for this video. And tell me, how how is the MBA life so far? So far, uh, we started with our first week at the orientation week, and it has been pretty hectic. So we've already experienced sleep deprivation and uh, prioritization of various items. So let's see how it goes further. All right. Uh, also, guys, uh, if some of you must have recognized him from the video of SSCBS versus I am in third, where he said that, you know, it's just an excuse to not give CAT if you are choosing IB Mat. And now he's here giving two tips sitting as a student of I am background. So I think the whole circle is complete with this video. Starting off with the questions. Firstly, when did you start preparing? Because most of the 2024 aspirants will be in the middle of their preparation right now, must be thinking right. of starting their preparation. So what was your time? Right. So I had started my preparation by July 2023. Now I would have preferred to start it earlier because, but I had some personal obligations due to which I started my preparation slightly late. And yeah, so I took around four, uh, four or five months and went hardcore on preparation for CAT. Hmm. So you said you would prefer starting earlier. So what is the ideal month that any aspirant should start? I would say an ideal month would approximately be seven to eight months. So it would be good if the person started their preparation by March or February. Mm -hmm. And then they could gradually uh, even out their preparation throughout, uh, throughout the course till November. So that would be mm -hmm. ideal. But I have seen a lot of people who, uh, who prepared for only a few months and were able to crack cat gloriously. But I would still say to be on the safe side, they should start early. You said that you had sort of less time on your hands. So what was your strategy? Did you devote certain number of hours daily? Was your strategy some something that you did weekly? Or what was your plan during the four or five months? Right. So I think uh, during these four or five months, I had completely devoted myself to CAT, but I did not want to sacrifice on any other activities. I was able to manage my internship as well as my position of responsibility at CBS. Apart from that, daily schedule would approximately be uh, devoting two, three hours to CAT preparation. And on weekends, I would go, let's say, seven to eight hours. This would also include my coaching time uh, in the institute in which I had enrolled. And gradually, as we came closer to the CAT month, the November, the doomsday month. So during that month, I uh, would take and leave from my college so that I could completely focus myself and zone into the uh, CAT preparation. So during mm -hmm. those particular days, I devoted approximately seven to eight hours daily. Right, right. And as you said, ki, from the very beginning of your preparation, your weekends would go to your coaching time as well. So what is your take on the self-studying versus coaching thing that many students contemplate because there are many free resources available as well. Uh, and many students do not find coaching that helpful in their preparation. So firstly, I am a firm believer that a person can crack cat by studying uh, themselves as well. So self-preparation is more than sufficient. In fact, even if you take coaching, 80 to 70% of your entire CAT result is going to depend on yourself studying, right? So apart from that, the coaching institutes are also quite expensive nowadays. So I would firmly suggest that if people want to be economical in their CAT preparation, they can go ahead with a uh, self uh, study, but they must make sure that they have the consistency and the determination to make sure that they're going to stay uh, firmly on their CAT motivation. And it's not going to be like, sometimes they're going to get bored. Sometimes they're going to get motivated. It shouldn't be like that. 
right? So they must ensure that they're going to prepare properly. So that's the reason that, uh, apart from that, I uh, took my coaching institute because I felt I'll be meeting more and more people over there. And that was also slightly helpful. So, yeah. Right, right. Uh, and also, Siddharth, as you said, motivation keeps on wavering throughout the course of your preparation. So what can one do to keep themselves motivated throughout these, I think, five to six months? Right. So one of the prime reasons that I felt I was able to crack at was because I knew that I enjoyed solving these questions, right? If somebody gave me a cons question, I would get right to it to solve it, right? I enjoyed the process. So I think enjoying this entire thing is definitely helpful. It may not be uh, that you enjoy all these sections. It could be for a particular section, but that is fine also. As long as you enjoy some of the process, it's good. Secondly, it's important to stay competitive. I had a close uh, friend group of three people. And in that, we used to compare scores. We used to uh, test, tech, uh, like keep us accountable for the progress that we're making. And that was super helpful because uh, you just know that, okay, these guys are with you and you need to compete with them. And you're always making sure that you're bumping up your scores. So mm -hmm. I think these two tips are definitely handy. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Right, right. So Kafi, uh, we talked about the overall CAD strategy. Now coming on to the sections, the three sections of QA, BA and DILR. Um, what was your sort of strategy for all of them? As you said, you enjoyed doing QA, but you also have to tackle DILR and BA to get such, an, or such a percentile that you scored. Sure. So I'll just go, go over each and every section briefly. Let's mm -hmm. start with BARC, which is verbal ability and reading comprehension. So for reading comprehension, you can clearly divide them into three parts, right? The first part is your reading ability. Of course, this includes your speed as well. Second is your comprehension skills, whether you're able to comprehend what the passage is trying to say, you're able to connect the dots or not. And the third part is critical reasoning, right? When you're solving the question, you must make sure that you're arriving at, a, at the answer in a structured format. So these are the three aspects of reading comprehension. People need to test where they're lacking and make up for it in that particular aspect of RCs. VA is also uh, pretty self-explanatory. You just need to make sure that you're devoting sufficient practice to each and every type of question for a, a verbal ability. It could be para jumbles, para completion, etc. Coming to quantitative ability, I feel uh, one can start by devoting themselves to topic-wise sections. If they're going through a coaching, it makes sense that they'll be completing this topic-wise um, practice through across several months. But I would say that still attempt sectionals and mocks regardless of whether your syllabus has been completed or not. After each topic has been completed, make sure now you're giving sufficient number of sectionals and mocks. And finally, DILR. DILR is simply hardcore practice. You, know, you need to attempt two or three sets uh, if you're extremely uh, weak at the, this particular section and gradually grow this number and a good number overall would be approximately 150 for the entire CAD preparation and then you can say that okay you've mastered this particular section so yeah sorry 150 sets of DILR so 150 sets so this is more than enough to make sure that you've mastered the section right so start with mm -hmm. an easy level and then gradually increase the difficulty that's the strategy mm -hmm. for DILR Right, right, got it. And as you said, ki, even if your syllabus is not complete, you should start writing sectional tests, you should start writing mocks. So talking about mocks, when did you start writing mocks? Many people get trapped in the idea that syllabus pehle ho jai, then we'll move to the mocks, which I think is a big mistake. So what is your take yeah, on that's this absolutely entire thing? Incorrect. So one must not wait for the syllabus to be completed, as you mentioned. Right. So I started my mock uh, when my syllabus was 0% complete. I first gave a mock and then started my syllabus to gauge mm. in which particular uh, aspect am I la lagging behind it. And I realized that I was lagging behind in each aspect. So I was now uh, even more motivated to make sure that I was going to prepare for CAT seriously. Right. Mm. So uh, that's the first time I gave mock. Initially, I started giving mocks approximately once a week. And that number gradually bumped up to, let's say, twice a week. And in November, I was giving twice or thrice, depending on whether I was able to analyze my mocks properly or not one must not uh, give another mock before they complete their analysis of the previous mock okay, so an analysis is super important uh, without that you won't be improving you would just be practicing without any direction many people do not understand the amount of time one needs to devote to analyze a mock so would you like to share like how much time did you devote what was your strategy of analyzing your mocks yeah so firstly you need to 
go over the questions you did incorrectly make sure you re-attend re them without looking at the solution then you look at the solution if you're right or not and then go over the solution uh, which, the, which is presented by the uh, mock provider right so mm -hmm. it, this is the format that you need to go through for all sections does not matter if, whether it's VARC, QA or DILR make sure you're re-attempting then looking at the solution and then looking at where you went wrong that's it mm -hmm. I think we've talked about all the preparation, talking about the exam day, you know, hmm. form me hona is very important. Mindset say hona is very important because you hmm. might be preparing for all the months and us din kya ho jai, you never. So how can one keep themselves in the right mindset? And actually what is the right mindset? You know, one day before the exam and yeah. on the exam. Day. Right. So I think I personally have seen a lot of people who are much more competent and intelligent than me, but they ended up scoring slightly lower percentiles. One thing that went wrong for them was that they weren't in the zone during the exam day. Like the, those two hours are going to be crucial and it's going to determine your entire year. For the exam day, what I did was I started aligning my entire sleep schedule, my eating schedule according to my exam time. My exam time was slot 3, 4 to 6. And for that, I made sure that I was attempting a mock every day, four to six during November, right? So I made sure that I, my productivity was at peak during that month. And at the exam day as well, I was going to be in my very best. So that's how I was able to make sure that I was productive during my four to six hours at the exam day. And apart from that, you make sure that uh, your social media consumption and entertainment is also limited. It's not that it should go down to zero. You should also come, uh, keep yourself rejuvenated. But ap apart from that, uh, yeah, I would just say that try to keep yourself uh, healthy and active during the, uh, those last two few weeks. So how large or small was your social media consumption during your preparation? I, I used to uh, take a look at Instagram for three to four minutes after every sectional or mock that I attempted. And it was fun. I knew that I was doing this in control and I wasn't addicted. So uh, that was approximately one, one and a half hour was my screen time on social media. Um, any common mistakes that students commit, you know, in their preparation journey or during the exam that you think you might have avoided in your own journey? Right. So one common mistake that's coming to my mind right now is people need to gauge their level of aptitude in a particular section, right? So if let's say that I'm, I'm confident about my quantitative abilities, I need to make sure that I'm solving questions of that particular level, right? So if my uh, level is at the 99 percentile, I need to make sure the questions are of that level as well. I can't go back down to easy questions because that's not going to improve me further, right? So I need to make sure that the questions are of the same level as my aptitude. If I feel my VARC is weak, I need to solve easier questions first, then move on to the medium level questions and then the hard questions, right? So it's a step ladder. And uh, we, we must not go back, even if we feel that, okay, if I'm not able to hard solve the hard questions, I'll go back to the medium questions. If I'm able to solve them, then I'll move back again. But one, again, one must need to align their uh, level of aptitude with their uh, uh, questions for difficulty. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Because solving easier questions is only going to give you a false sense of security and you'll exactly. end up with It's going to give you a short of satisfaction, course. but yeah. correct. Right, right. Okay. Um, finally, any piece of advice for future aspirants 2024, 2025, or if you're watching this video in any year beyond that? Sure. I think one thing that I want to say to everyone is, guys, please do not lose hope. Luck is an immensely huge factor that you can't account for, right? I hadn't achieved a single 99.99 in any of the mocks that I had given, but during the D-Day when I gave, I knew that I'd get such a percentile and I had no idea how I was able to get it. Right. So it was all a game of luck. You need to make sure you need to trust the process. And this is also a sense of motivation that's going to carry you for, carry you forward as well. So don't lose hope. Right. Right. All right. Thank you, Siddhant. I think this video covers everything for anyone who's looking to take CAT this year or beyond that. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. I'm sure this will be very helpful for all the CAT aspirants. Any doubts or uh, comment suggestions, anything you can drop them in the comment box. If you want to reach to Siddhant, I'll uh, drop his LinkedIn in the uh, description box. All right. And thank you so much, Siddhant. All the best for your MBA journey for the next two years. Uh, and I'm sure you'll do wonders in 
come back to this uh, video to share more insights about other things related to FBA. Thank you so much, Nishtha, and all the best to all the future characters. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye bye.